What is going on my today people? I really appreciate you all joining me yet again for another. On today's entry, we're going to be talking about Netflix trying to be regular TV so bad. Like what what got y'all so vexed? Like come on. Uh, we also are going to be uh, kind of exploring the uh Fed finally admitting that we are in a recession. I mean, they did kind of try to backtrack by saying it's mild, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh also definitely got to talk about the company dominion that's the company that's suing fox right now for a whole lot of money like i'll, I'll talk about how they got to this point uh also 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 there is finally a tiktok ban in the books in america who did it and why <laughs> let's talk about that as well all right but first for those who have been listening to the episodes first i gotta say thank you but Y'all already know how this show goes. Before we move any further, I just got to ask a question out of respect. Let's go. Dear future robots, do you operate on a hive mind or are you guys more individualistic? All right. Now, just thinking about it, like, I definitely see the benefits of uh, having the hive mind. Right. You can you know, obviously control different parts and all have one centralized mind just getting things done. It just seems a bit more productive. Right. Just makes all the sense. But at the same time, if you're moving towards being a sentient being, being an individual is really attractive. <laughs> we'll see. Let's start the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's everybody feeling out there? Really hope y'all are all living in your blessings. Uh, for those that are wondering, yes, my wife made it back home safely. I survived, obviously, with the kids. It went great. Man, if anything, it, it was it was relaxing. I, a bit more relaxing than I thought because uh, my daughter does not play that. She's my, my little princess. I give her whatever. Uh, even if she screams, I'm not. <laughs> hey, man, it, it just is what it is. But it was a bit more relaxing, I must say, uh, than I anticipated. And uh, it was really good this weekend to, you know, while the kids were taking their naps, of course, uh, be able to just lay down, elevate, ice a little bit. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was really good, man. Netflix. Why are y'all trying to be regular TV so bad? <laughs> like we didn't subscribe and pay you guys all this money monthly just to go back gradually to watching regular appointment TV. And for those who don't know what appointment TV is, just context clues. It's what we grew up on, uh, having to wait on things and like like Netflix, man. Y'all been slow walking us for the past few years, man. Like it went from being able to watch shows whenever I wanted to, the whole season in a in a in a weekend if I wanted to, to now I gotta wait weekly for. It. Like this is not what we signed up for, man. Like come on, Netflix, like get with it. But there, uh, they obviously got a lot of people upset this past weekend. Uh, actually, yesterday, <laughs> I'm, I'm recording this right now on. Monday and uh, they had a live show. It's, it's one of the first of its kind, really, uh, since the Chris Rock live event. Uh, but they had a live show for one of their very popular uh, dating experiments called the Love is Blind. A lot of people were waiting for this show, including my wife and I. Right. It's a show that uh, I've come to enjoy certain parts of the show. Like, you know I mean, like when they finally get out of what they call the pods and get to the real life. I, I like the reality in it, not the fake you know sappy fake love story type stuff eh, i i can do without all of that but uh it, it is a show that i i uh i have enjoyed and at some points i do enjoy but we spent in totality last night maybe an hour trying to get in like an hour like like, like i would spend like uh maybe five minutes trying to get in just keep getting error messages after the wheel stops spinning and then we'll be like you know what i'm tired of doing this right now babe let's just Let's watch something else. So we'll watch Billions for like 30, 40 minutes and then go right back to trying Netflix again. This this was like last night. Maybe it took maybe two hours of this before I just like gave up. Like, you know what? This The live show has to be over. We'll just watch it whenever they put it up for streaming. They didn't even do that. <laughs> like they, they apparently put something out late last night or the early this morning that, hey, we're going to just have to record this for streaming. Guys, be patient. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. You're starting to see people on social media say things like, you know what? We all deserve to share a password after this mess up like Netflix. Come on. But hey, uh, I, I say it happens. 
like before before finding out that they were just going to record it for streaming i was thinking maybe they were doing it on purpose like i get the whole live stream thing i mean obviously there's potential for a lot of gain for netflix to to knock that out of the ballpark but that wasn't this and this wasn't that (laughs) like man it was a bad experience man but we'll see if they learn a lesson from this or or just keep pushing because it's extremely lucrative to to figure a way to become like appointment tv i mean it makes sense they were giants for so long so i don't know we will see but i can tell you netflix a lot of people out here are not happy with you all uh we'll see this this reunion better be worth it it better be the most messy reunion ever <laughs> like i know everybody's waiting on uh uh irena josh d and jacqueline we, we gotta see the drama man like we we love the drama it's like watching a train crash like we we can't we can't turn away no matter how gruesome it is Ugh. <laughs> what does that say about us man come on but uh, we're going to get right into Scrap Metal Media, y'all. We got a bunch of things to talk about, and I want to get it out of the way as quickly as possible. Let's get right into it, y'all. Let's go. Scrap Metal Media. Again, joining me uh today let's get right into the fed man like wow 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 now y'all admit that we're in a recession like since last year we've been looking at this and i've rem- i remember hearing somewhere and actually doing my own research just to confirm that we actually had two quarters of negative gdp or a decline i should say in the gdp uh we were there and i i haven't looked previous to that but we were there already. What was the reason why they didn't announce it then? And did they get their uh, selves to a point of being prepared for it now? And maybe that's why they're putting it out. Uh, but either way, I don't. I don't think I. Uh, I like being like played with, or, or, or you know, uh, it feels like as a society or economy, we're being kind of ragged off by the elite, man, because they're they're making buku money, but we're the ones that you know every few months there's a surge in gas prices or or the price of eggs is this this is not cool at all. I'm not a fan of it. I don't respect it. I don't know if it came from down, uh, from up on high. Uh, you know, so, uh, President Biden not wanting to look bad in the polls, or or if just corporations needed to buy a few more robotic kiosks to replace the uh, the inevitable to, to replace the inevitable loss of employees. Like, what's going on? And everybody wants to talk about tipflation now. <laughs> Y'all, they're admitting that we're going to be in a recession now. Finally, they're trying to say it's mild. Uh, they're saying it's going to really start. Look at look at the, the the arrogance. They're saying it's really going to start towards the end of this year, the middle of this year, and we're going to be in it for the next two years. Like, man, they they keep showing us they don't care about us, y'all. Like. <laughs> This is crazy, but uh, we'll see what kind of effect this has on us as a society. We'll obviously keep looking into it. Uh, But as far as the recession goes, obviously we've been seeing already uh, job loss uh, in numbers, obviously interest rates, interest rate hikes. We've been seeing that as well. We'll see, man. Like this is, we're in a very interesting uh, uh, situation. And though this isn't the first recession that we've had, it's not the first depression. I mean, obviously, I wasn't around the last depression. I'm not that old. Uh, but this this isn't the first economic situation where we've where we've um, had to, uh, you know, kind of bring our belt in a little bit. But this is unique to this new environment, this new society. So how are we going to be able to navigate this? All right. Like we're looking at like temporary slowdown in economic growth, negative effects on employment, consumer spending and investment. Like what else? What else is there? Man, when I say we need some new leadership, get these old boomers out of here, man. We need some new millennial leadership, some 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 brave people that aren't just going to be selling out for the bag. Uh, some some selfless people that really want to make this country great, like I said on the last episode, and really want to be heroes and help people out here, man. Because it seems like we got nothing but people that are that are just greedy, the weak. I don't know. I don't know how to call it, but man, something's got to change, man. Something's definitely got to change, man. We, we should be able to sue, right? <laughs> like uh, Dominion is suing Fox. We should be able to sue the government for messing up. All right. Because this this don't make too much sense for me. But like I just talked about or just mentioned Dominion. That's the company that was making uh, voting machines for the elections. Uh, I think like they've been making it for a while now. They had a lot of negative press, man. There was a lot of conspiracy theories out there. And Donald Trump just fed into them. 
and he was putting it on the mainstream now upon doing that all the media sources obviously trump is entertaining so all the media sources just jumped on that right now or at the moment they did and uh dominion uh, they took a hit from it man you had crazies out there that were believing these conspiracy theories going after dominion workers just trashing the company on social media and obviously if i'm a company and i got the president of the biggest most powerful nation on the globe uh saying that we're in cahoots with the elite to destroy democracy <laughs> like that's that's a big target on my back man not only that but i'm losing money <laughs> like so this this lawsuit right now against fox news is for 1.6 billion like 1.6 billion dollars like wow that's 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 not a little uh that's not a little pebble in a pond that's that's a major major bag so we'll see because and and dominion's not really suing to clear their name because their name in court has already been cleared uh they're suing to prove the monetary loss and the actual damage to the reputation of the company and obviously you guys can imagine how much damage that has done but uh fox on their end is gonna have to prove somehow that uh they were all in it <laughs> for the news and that it was just uh, not even an honest honest mistake but they had to cover what the president at the time which was donald trump has made newsworthy uh we'll see if they can get that excuse off i think it all depends on where it's being tried uh, i think it depends on and also the jury the judge oh, uh, all that it, it just goes back to where it's being tried so we will see all right this this may very well be a bench trial it may be a settlement who knows but uh we'll see if they can get out of this one all right <laughs> we'll see uh what else what else what else uh, we we also have to talk about this tiktok ban it is not necessarily the first of its kind but it's the first to one of its kind in america like TikTok is a major brand, a major company. It makes a lot of money for its parent company. We talked about that a few uh, uh, episodes ago. Uh, but what does a ban really mean? Like, and, and it's in Montana. I, I've never been to Montana for, for my listeners out there that are in Montana. How, how is this like, how is this being executed? Like, what is it? Or, like, is it just literally once you cross the Montana line, you're unable to use it or the uh, law enforcement has to like, how is this going to happen? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, how is this going to be implemented? I'm, I'm anxious to actually see that. Uh, I'll look more into that for sure. Uh, I mentioned earlier that this isn't the first, necessarily the first of its kind. There's there's countries out there uh, that uh, ban TikTok use for their uh, workers, like workers within the government itself. Uh, there's um, corporate offices as well that do not allow TikTok to be on, uh, and I say Netflix, I meant TikTok, uh, but that won't allow TikTok to also be used on their company owned devices, right? Now, let's see, you got com uh, countries like France, India, New Zealand, and that's just to name a few. But you also got the uh, Florida State University. Uh, they also ban it on all school owned devices. Like, wow, <laughs> it's no joke, man. Uh, social media, man, we're going to see so much shifts. Uh, we're going to see so many shifts as far as uh, how it's used, how it's talked about, how companies make money on it. Like, man, like we'll, we'll see, man. I, I definitely want to keep an eye on that. And I hope y'all are all are keeping an eye on it as well. Any of y'all out there use uh, TikTok a lot? I, I don't really use TikTok. I'm not. Y'all know me already by now. I'm not a TikTok or a social media user, really. My social media is YouTube. I love it. Uh, but that's really the extent of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Every so often I'll go and, and clear the uh, clear the DMs and stuff like that or, you know, the notifications. I should say, but uh, uh, I'm not a big social media user, man. I'm just I'm weird like that, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll 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 stay on it and 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 see what this actually means for us moving forward, or what this even means for the company. Because a lot of people uh, and and the legislation also in Montana, they were citing the possible threat of Chinese, you know, just involvement within the U.S. government and trying to spy on the U.S. government or just being malicious. That that's like they didn't they didn't have any proof or evidence. Pre, I guess you can call it preemptive. Uh, and, and that's really, if, if anything, that's really why they say it's the first of its kind, because this is like preemptive. It's not even like they have a history, like at least India, where they can look at and be like, OK, we've had issues with this. And then there's a lot of propaganda, et cetera, et cetera, and violence that it's causing in the streets. People are really dying. So, hey, this is why we're doing this. There's no real <laughs> you know, for Montana. like yo. But hey, uh, salute to the Montana people out there. Uh, oh, you call yourselves Montanians or I, I don't know, but all my Floridian. For, for those that don't know, I live in Florida, but for all my Floridians out there, this guy has no original ideas. 
he literally just uh, takes ideas from other places. Like he uses a lot of Texas and Georgia's ideas. So I, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to see a TikTok ban sooner or later. So get your VPNs ready, I guess. Uh, or just stop using TikTok. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. Stop using it. But now that I'm bringing up DeSantis, I got to mention just right quick because it's, it's still developing. But he's he's attempting to uh, put an abortion ban. Uh, anywhere before, I think it's before six weeks. Uh, y'all might be surprised by my answer because y'all know how I feel about DeSantis, but I'm not necessarily against this. And it's nothing about policing uh, women's bodies or any, any of the new buzzwords the uh, super liberal people want to make up. I don't care about none of that. Uh, but uh, my wife and I have, have suffered through a miscarriage. Like, you know, I had to sit there and, and see her going through it and me even have my emotional, uh, you know, breaks dealing with uh, losing a eight week baby and i call it a baby because all these words we make up fetus embryo uh, it still means baby this is how you make a human being but i remember that pain i remember how i felt I, hey with the santas doing this i'm not i'm not against it at all i think this will maybe help to get our society to a point where we're not on this yolo mindset you only live once for those my international listeners who for some reason don't know what that means but for some reason our society has kind of been just just moving farther away from i guess what i personally can deem as decency like like we have this society where it's do what you will like like and and, and don't get me wrong do what thou wilt like i get it uh but yeah i missed the rest of the quote <laughs> it's under love all right and to me uh getting rid of babies when there's no ne necessary reason to like you weren't raped or whatever the case is i don't i don't think that has much to do with love i think it has a lot to do with uh selfishness as opposed to selflessness uh but every situation is unique that's why i think the brightest minds need to be the ones uh focusing on this and trying to figure out something that works it should definitely not be a wild wild west type situation so and that seems to be what a lot of vocal people on on social media uh, want it to be just a wild wild west i do what i want i did like eh, nah that's not how a society is that's not how society operates that's how actually you destroy society so if you're one of those people that just want hey women do what you want the, the abortions that just move to the forest somewhere just find a patch of land just you know just live in a tree i don't know like just get away from society though because in society we need to have rules this is just how things operate that's it you know and for those out there that are probably saying yeah but you're putting it all on the women how about the men they need to yeah the men need to take responsibility as well you need to be careful who you're sleeping with who you're laying with who you're allowing into you uh, who you're entering uh, just make better decisions man we need to get back to the time where decisions were were weighted like you you had to truly sit and really think and, and make the right decisions and have parents that i mean like we, we need to get back to that and granted i know it's not it's easier said than done uh but we were there at one point the only thing that really messed it up was racism right <laughs> uh man racism messed up a lot but uh we need to kind of get back to the the more family centric just the more like just decency just moral decency that i think this country had at some point again outside of racism and white supremacy all that kind of stuff but we need to find a way back to that i think it'll take a few generations but i think we can do it all right i think we can do it all right so again i'm not mad at DeSantis for this i'm just i'm, I'm just not uh We'll maybe put a question or a poll in, in here somewhere on the episode. You guys can let me know how you all feel about it. If you're against uh, abortion rights for, for for women or if you're for it. And, and for those who don't know me, I'm an individual. All right. I consume, I consume, I consume from all sides. And based on my uh, individualism, I guess you could say, I come to my own uh, opinion. You know what I mean, based on all of that. So I consume and then I, I let out my own opinion based on that. All right. I'm not just going to jump on the side because you're wearing red or jump on the side because you're wearing blue or jump on the side because you're liberal jump on the side because you're conservative i'm a real i'm a human being and we're complex <laughs> and we're multifaceted i make up my own mind i don't i don't straddle the fence now somebody was <laughs> a little off topic but somebody was questioning me about uh me talking about the dylan mulvaney character from uh last episode and how hey man live your life yeah i i I stand by that. Live your life, buddy. Like, you know, market your stuff to your own corner of the world, the people that value whatever you're whatever you're selling. I think he's weird. Yeah, for sure. I think he's a weirdo. But it, it, for me to go out of my way and hate on this this young man for doing his thing or, you know, like, no, I'm not going to do that. Salute to you, buddy. Do your thing. You want to be uh, what they call it. You want to as a crucial part of, of just life and just beautiful, like 
the original <laughs> you know i mean the original version of human beings like women salute uh i think it's a bit disrespectful for what a lot of um you know what a lot of uh men are doing uh but hey uh, i think there's a lot of research also to be done because <laughs> I, I right now i think uh we're we're kind of in this point where we're moving to a it's like a it's like we're 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 in a circus right so <laughs> like it's 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 about time we start to stop the fighting and and move everybody out of the circus all right and then we all can <laughs> sit outside of the circus and figure out what this society is going to look like uh and and come together cohesively to figure that out first of all because you know we've been in a society for the past few hundred years really where it's only been you know for the most part quote unquote white men in that room so you know we, we we got to figure that out all right because right now we're sitting in a circus and it, there's, there's a few fights going on and yeah uh, i don't want no part of it all right but yeah that's that's you know so yeah let's move on y'all <laughs> y'all got me I'm, I'm gonna do it don't get me wrong i'm gonna do a whole i'm gonna do an episode on this because it's really intriguing and I, I have been asked about it before but um i speak my mind i do flat out all right uh what are we gonna get to next we just talked about uh social media and uh the abortion ban so uh man mikey williams mikey williams man this 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 guy uh if 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 we can point to i guess what i would deem a failure in parenting this might have to be one of those i mean we just had john moran <laughs> run into his foolishness we just like i didn't see imani bates like run into his little uh hiccup like oh, mikey williams man and, and i'm not even gonna say i couldn't see it coming like, you can you know there's been videos that he's that he posts on youtube this kid just always seemed like to not have great family structure to be uh, a little too much into hip-hop and nba young boy and all this kind of stuff but <sighs> I can't y'all hey i'm telling y'all when i do my episode on hip-hop y'all gonna love it i guarantee it but he's been listening to one the wrong hip-hop right because i've been on <laughs> i've been on record saying that hip-hop is is kind of been a net negative uh for society especially when it pertains to quote-unquote uh well young quote-unquote black youth uh so much talent i really hope this isn't something that is gonna really squander it i hope this is a reality check for him because we've seen again imani bates come back uh from what seemed to be an erasure of everything he's done basketball wise and the future that he could have had so we'll see i really hope mikey can turn this around his parents i hope this was a wake-up call for his parents as well really like seriously like just like uh john moran's parents like yeah y'all just living on what your kid is making like at some point the kid becomes the parent like y'all saying yes sir no <laughs> yes sir uh yes ma'am or whatever the case is to him or her you know because there's some you know angel reese making a boatload of money so i can't even it can't even just pertain to men anymore because there's young girls out here just making a bag with this nil but mikey williams man come on bro and for those who don't know uh, he was arrested on a assault charge with a deadly weapon if uh, we should have never gave you money was a person like no joke no joke and i i, I i'm not gonna say i feel bad for him because even though he's a teen he's, he's i think he's like over 18 he's an adult man like Nah, man. And he's been a little cocky. He seemed like a little cocky brat. He's been that for a few years now. So we'll see if he can get it together, y'all, man. Um, For those who don't even know who he is, just Google or YouTube Mikey Williams and uh, just look up Mikey Williams highlights. Yeah, he's been that since high school. But we'll see. He's he's taking a dip. I don't like uh, we'll see if that man can get out of this situation. Uh, I hope so. But hey, man, you made the choice, buddy. Uh, Now that we're on basketball, kind of. Uh, did y'all see E40 last night at the game? Uh, for I guess causing a ruckus uh, Sacramento uh, their security department's official word is that he was standing up too much and you know I, I don't I don't know uh, his official word is that he was being heckled by a quote-unquote racist uh, fan that was behind him uh, I'm not a major fan of E40's music I mean he had tell me when to go tell me when to go tell me when to go tell me when to get down that was hey, that was a banger back in the day uh, but you know we don't jerk anymore so, uh, so hey salute to him either way he's been a stand up dude in hip-hop for well over 20 years and me saying that i only say that to say that i've never heard of him behaving like this i've never heard of him getting upset you i've never seen it uh i'm, I'm sure it's happened behind camera uh, behind cameras but from what i've seen i've never seen him move crazy he's always been a highly respected guy uh, and seemed to always give respect at least in front of the camera so i i I believe him. <laughs> I think he was getting heckled. Uh, I think somebody might have been jealous that he was in a seat better than theirs. And, uh, you know, he, he was 
you know, he's dressed in the big chain and the little rolled up scully, you know, like, you know, he was dressed really hip hop, but rich hip hop. Uh, so, yeah, you start heckling him because he's clearly obviously this is basketball. This is what we do. It's real contentious when you're in the arena, even football. I mean, there's tons of football fights that happen every freaking week, basketball, all sports, period. Uh, but I'm sure he was riding for his team. And uh, that was just that moment that, that the, the fan that was saying the racist stuff needed. That was just the moment, allegedly saying the racist stuff. But that was the moment they needed to kind of slide in there and cause something. But it hit it. It stung E40 enough to where he had to get up. And it, it led to what you guys saw on YouTube or saw during the game or whatnot. But uh, I'm rocking with him on this because there's there's no way somebody of his caliber is making up uh, the narrative that they said something racist or were behaving in that fashion. I believe it. We've seen it too many times. We've seen it. And we've only seen it lied about a few times. Like <laughs> Juicy Smoulier. Uh, what did they say? Juicy Smoulier, whatever the case is. Like We've only seen people lie about it a few times. So I'm always going to usually side with the person that says, hey, this person is being racist. I, I believe you. <laughs> I stand with that person. Uh, but hey, uh, I can't wait to hear the actual story from E40's own mouth. Or is it is it to the point now we just leave it alone? You know, let a let a sleeping dog lay. Yeah, I, just just leave it alone. It's past. Uh, when you get into these arenas, though, have your people talk to the security. Make sure you guys are documenting what people are saying. And uh, I think you 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 can avoid this, right? Uh, the Sacramento security might need to apologize. I don't know. I'm sure there's enough video to where they can actually see what happened specifically. But if that's the case and this woman was really being racist, then I need to apologize to you for you, man. But hey, uh, that's really all I have for scrap metal media, y'all. That was that was fun. I like it. I like it. Man, I really like the scrap metal media. And don't worry, I'm gonna read, you know, I got some stuff coming. All right, I got some stuff coming. I almost gave it up too easy, but I got some stuff coming and uh it's gonna be fun. Y'all, it's it, man. I, I'm really enjoying this. Watch me grow, watch me glow. Uh yeah, I appreciate y'all. That's it for Scrap Metal Media, y'all. Yeah. As you guys can probably already guess from context clues, y'all know I like to leave a little, you know, breadcrumbs here and there as to what the main topic or main segment is going to be about. Y'all know I love that smart stuff. <laughs> but as you can probably maybe have guessed, uh, today I will be talking about the ego. All right. Ego. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, seriously, what is that? I know we've heard the word. It's uh, a three letter word. It's really basic. It's not anything complex as far as its construction. But <laughs> the concept has been here a long time, right? It's uh, got a history that's in philosophy, psychology and psychoanalysis. Um, if you're looking at philosophy, the term ego, which is uh, actually Latin for I, uh, has been used to refer to the self, the subject of experience, or in a rational mind. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato distinguished between the ego or quote unquote soul and the body, arguing that the former was immortal and capable of knowledge while the latter was mortal and prone to ignorance. In modern psychology, the concept of the ego was first introduced by Sigmund Freud, who I don't particularly like, but as a, <laughs> that was actually a part of his uh, psychoanalytic theory. According to Freud, the ego is the part of the psyche that mediates between the id which is the unconscious instinctual part of the psyche the ego is responsible for regulating behavior and satisfying the id's desire in socially acceptable ways socially is the key part here later psychologists such as uh, carl jung and eric erickson expanded on freud's notion of the ego emphasizing its role in developing a sense of identity and autonomy jung believed that the ego was the center of consciousness and that it was necessary for integrating the different aspects of the psyche. Erickson, though, described uh, development of the ego through a series of psychological stages culminating in the achievement of a sense of identity in adolescence. Sheesh. In more recent years, uh, some psychologists and philosophers have questioned the usefulness of the concept of the ego, arguing that it may be too narrow, maybe a little too individualistic. Uh, they actually suggest that a more holistic and rational approach to the self may be more appropriate. Overall, we'll definitely say that the history of the ego reflects ongoing debates about the nature of the self, uh, the role of the consciousness and the relationship between the individual and society. It's it's extremely uh, <laughs> that that might have to be one of the most complex three-letter words we have in the English language. 
<laughs> right? Uh, but lately, honestly, lately in 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 popular society, pop culture, uh, how should I say this? Uh, there's been a lot of movement in the uh, new kind of like I guess you can call it the ego death community. Uh, and these are typically I, I don't want to say stoners, uh, but these are typically psychedelic drug users, people who are active or past drug users, you know, that actually have platforms and are pushing messages of hey use drugs to, to their fan bases and sometimes it trickles down obviously to kids i think that's extremely dangerous like the joe rogan show on the joe rogan show they you know he's always he's a big proponent for uh i don't want to say a big proponent but he seems to be allegedly i guess a proponent for psychedelic drug use and uh, he has you know speakers come on his show tons of times and a lot of them in the episodes that i've seen in the past it's it's more than i can count on my two hands that have gone on his show and talked about how maybe great of an experience they've had you sometimes you may see somebody go on every so once in a while and say that it was a bad experience but i think this is extremely dangerous you know not everybody's different chemically everybody's different so for you to be you know for you to have a major platform like you do and be trying to entice people to use certain drugs i think that's crazy i just do they're trying to make this whole hey yeah, it's it's amazing and it opens you up and teaches you the secrets of life and it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous to me man like this this concept of, of ego death i'll say guys uh, which refers to the dissolution of the ego or self-identity has, has really gained popularity in recent years like i said the joe rogan show is one of them uh, has been one of the major proponents on there and like i said that's through his guests and stuff like that I, I'm, I'm not sure what he believes i think i remember hearing episodes or seeing episodes where he's talked about actually using and, ha and having these experiences like he's had mike tyson on before and you know, those who know mike tyson or, or know of mike tyson have seen him recently he's talked about doing the toad which is licking or consuming poison that is uh, extracted from the back of a poisonous tree frog <sighs> is this your king <laughs> like wow uh but uh this 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 whole new disillusion of the ego or self-identity has really gained the popularity in recent years man unfortunately uh particularly in the context of psychedelic experiences and spiritual practices one of the most popular sayings associated with the ego death movement is kill the ego and let the soul shine <laughs> This phrase encapsulates the idea that by letting go of the ego and the attachment to the self, individuals can connect with a higher spiritual universal consciousness and experience a sense of oneness with the world around them. Yikes. So they're trying to say that by transcending the limitations of the ego, individuals can access deeper truths and insights about the nature of reality itself. I call cap. That's it. I call cap. Like the, the cap and the mushroom that y'all, <laughs> I call cap. It's, it, I don't believe it at all. Um, I really don't. I think it's a lot of uh, hippie nonsense. And it, again, I think it's just really unfortunate that these kind of messages are being pushed to, 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 to major fan bases. You know, the people who try this and lose their minds literally become schizophrenic. They're not going to have the platform to go on and say, hey, I went crazy from doing this. Don't do this. This isn't for everybody. Uh, yeah, like, they're not putting these, these safety precautions out there, these disclaimers. They're not doing that. I, I don't like it at all, man. And I don't honestly, I don't even like the depiction that they make of the ego I, I think these guys are a lot of intellectual like i i, I, don't, I, I hate i'm not in the market for disparaging people but i just have to say this intellectually defunct in in a few different ways morally defunct but uh, as far as intellect, I think there's just a whole bunch of intellectual copycats. That's it. They wait till somebody says something that kind of aligns with what they want to do and they jump on the bandwagon. They, you know, they search for it. And it's not to uh, single out Joe Rogan, as, you know, uh, whatever. I don't care. He's just one of many. I've heard this many, pla many places before, and I'm sure you guys have as well. Like I said, I don't even like how they discuss the ego, like kill the ego, kill the what? What are you talking about? The ego is us. It's just an aspect of us, period. The ego is not your enemy. Me. It, it's, it's, it's just a toddler that needs to be pacified. That's it. In, in other words, like it's, it's, it's just a toddler that needs to be raised the right way. It, it, it cries out to you saying, feed me, feed me. Uh, but you know what? It's up to you. It's up to you what you feed it. Because as they say, trash goes in, trash comes out. How, that was bars too jeez but <laughs> how how they talk about the ego i think is wholly incorrect uh i don't like it at all uh and honestly it just reiterates to me that sometimes people don't deserve these kind of platforms that they're on uh and and hey i'm not saying that i do um but i definitely think i have a better handle on what the ego is how it's affected or, or how i've interacted with it in my life is learning to kind of balance 
a lot better. That's one of the rules, uh, tenets that I that I that I live by. Uh, I'm almost a, I've almost become somewhat of a disciple of balance, feeding different aspects of my personality at times within reason, understanding that hey, you you can't indulge too much in this because that leads to this and that takes from this side. Uh, I think that leads to disharmony. And and in the past few years of my life, man, I've I, this has been the most peaceful I've ever been. And those that know me know what I've been through. I'm sure y'all have seen it as well. I, I don't play with the distractions. Um, I'm, I'm hard on myself when I need to be, and I take a break when I need to. I, I think that's very important. Like there's there's two sides to a coin, man. You gotta you gotta figure the balance out, man, in your own life, how it pertains to you and who you are. What you need to improve needs improving. That's as simple as that. It doesn't need cultivating. <laughs> You're not gonna do that. And what's what what you do see that's great in you, the light in you needs to be brightened. You know, it is what it is. You just got to figure out the balance. You know, uh, I used to be somebody who didn't necessarily deal with anxiety the right way. Uh, I didn't deal with stress the right way. And I had a lot of it. I've never been somebody that was afraid to say no. But I was always the guy who wanted to be the superhero and take on other people's problems and jump in. And and, and I, I, I was I'm about a three hour drive away from where most of my relatives are. But anybody had an issue, I was picking up the phone. And, Man. And I tell you now, uh, it's better for my mental health to sometimes just not pick up the phone. Because I know 85, 90% of the time, it's going to be something negative or this person did this. And uh, these are things I don't want in my life. To me, the balance looks like not looking at every video that's out there on, uh, I don't know, some BS websites like World Star or something like that. Not looking at every single video. Not watching snuff films like people can sit there and watch somebody get decapitated. I don't want that in my soul and my spirit, my energy, all that. I just don't. I just don't. I just don't. The ego, man. The ego. You don't need to kill it. You don't need to kill it at all. You need to raise it. You need to learn to live with it. Manage it. All right? Include that balance. Don't listen to a lot of these guys, man. <laughs> just don't. I, I'm not taking advice from somebody that's sitting around doing mushrooms. I'm just not. I'm just not. And salute to, like, I know some people personally who've done mushrooms in the past. I, I'm going to tell you how I feel. To say that. I'm going to tell you how I feel. Respectively. Or respectfully. Sure. Uh, but I don't care. And I'm not going to do mushrooms. I'm just not. At this point in my life, at least, I'm just not. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, but man, how do y'all feel about the ego? Has, is this something that you guys have thought about before? Uh, did you know some of the uh, kind of the history of it? Are you one of the proponents of this whole ego death movement? It's ridiculous, man. <laughs> but I urge you all to look into yourselves. All right. First, first, uh, you know, you can once I'm done with this segment, you can just pull it back a little bit, rewind and, and just listen again to what the ego is. Find that in yourself. All right. Find that balance. I think it's needed. And I think for everybody listening, finding that balance can help you out in your own personal lives. I'm not I'm not going to say, hey, you need to go do mushrooms to find the secrets of life. Oh, that's BS. B, y'all lucky I'm trying to keep this podcast PG, you know, just in case there's little kids listening and stuff like that. I have little kids, so <laughs> I'm keeping this as PG as possible. And I'm also not trying to curse. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm trying to slow down on my cursing, man. I went like nine, eight years or eight or nine years without cursing at all. And I'm trying to kind of get back to that. But hey, in due time, patience, strategy, <laughs> discipline, <laughs> ego, man. Don't, don't listen to these people out here, man. Find your balance. Learn who you are. All right. That's all I got, man. <laughs> That's all I got for this segment, man. Let's move into bit by bit. Let's go. This ain't just a prediction. This is bit by bit. My prediction for today is that the concept of the ego will continue to evolve as we learn more about what the quote-unquote self is. The body will continue to merely be a vehicle for what we truly are. Once that vehicle crashes out, we go back to something like that uh, hive mind that we talked about earlier. The collective. That's all I got for the time capsule today, y'all. I'm out. Peace. universes crashing just do your best to leave a mark also subscribe comment and leave five stars
This is Wendy, signing off. Dear Future Robots, peace. <laughs>